Hello chess lovers, Soren here with another interesting game. With the white piece is playing Soviet chess grandmaster David Bronstein and his opponent is Romanian international master Valodia Weissmann. The game was played in 1976 in Sandomierz, which is a historical town in southeastern Poland. Bronstein opened up with e4 to which Weissmann responded with e5 and there we have it, f4 is on the board. We have the hyper-aggressive king's gambit, d5. In return, black is choosing Folkbeer counter gambit. He takes d5, e4, d3, knight f6, d takes e4. Uh, in Bronstein's career, this line with d3 followed by d takes e4 can be seen very often when he's facing Folkbeer counter gambit. Knight takes e4, knight f3, bishop c5, hitting on f2, and queen e2. White is attacking the knight, is pinning it, and already bishop f2 is not dangerous. Moreover, in here, if you announce a check from f2, this is a mistake. White can gain advantage very quickly. After king d1, there is something wrong with the knight and the bishop. And I have queen takes d5 check, then knight fd2 is very strong. The knight on e5 is hanging, if f5, then knight c3. And then when you are moving away your queen, white is removing the defender and is winning the bishop on f2. Moreover, I have to tell you that after queen e2, even queen takes d5 is not good because, again, knight fd2 can be very unpleasant for black. After knight c3, queen f7, at least white is winning the f-pawn and is getting a perfect position. I don't know, queen b5 check can be played or knight takes e4, white has a huge advantage. Let's go back, but in our game after queen e2 we have bishop f5, which is the most accurate response, and knight c3, attacking the knight, protecting the central pawn on d5, queen e7, bishop e3. So if you remember previously I have already shared with you a game played between David Bronstein and Mikhail Tal. There was a game played in 1968 at the 6th Soviet Team Cup. In that game this position also occurred and in here Tal proceeded with knight takes c3. The game went on in the following move order and sorry, knight takes e2 was played and finally Bronstein even managed to beat the magician from Riga. After castling queenside bishop e4, knight g5, bishop takes d5, Bronstein went for a highly creative exchange sacrifice by playing g3. In case you missed that game, the link will be in the comment section, but in our game after bishop e3, we have bishop takes e3 by Weissmann. Looks like that Bronstein polished this line up to perfection and it's very hard to play against him. Knight takes c3, after which we have the exchange of queens on e7, B takes c3 and bishop takes c2. Black is equalizing materially, but white is just doing great and there are many problems to solve in black's camp. King d2 attacking the bishop and also freeing the e1 square for the rook. Bishop a4, rook e1 check and king d6, which turns out to be a mistake. Weissmann is following the good old rule which says that the best attacking piece in the endgame is the king, but in this case the king is becoming a target for white pieces. Instead, it was better to look for a safe shelter for the king and play a move like king f8. Although activating the rook later can be somewhat problematic. But in our game after rook e1 check, we have king d6. Knight g5, hitting on f7, then king takes d5. Well, instead it was better to play rook e8 and if knight takes f7 only then capture on d5. In this case, when the rook is on e8, it's playing a huge role, it's not allowing white rook to get activated, but in our game we have king takes d5, which is allowing white rook to harass black king further. Here we have rook e4, attacking the bishop, and once the bishop retreats, we have rook d4 check, king c6, bishop e2. This time the bishop is coming, knight d7, bishop f3 check, King b6, rook b1 check. There it goes, guys. We have a nice king hunt. King a5, rook takes b7, h6. Black is trying to kick away an active piece, but 
Bronstein proceeds with munching black pawns. Rook takes c7, rook b8, and this time we have knight takes f7. No one can stop Bronstein from grabbing pawns, right? Bishop takes f7, rook takes d7, and uh, yeah, in here Weissmann finally resigned. Because if we move like, for example, rook hf8, then black is also losing this pawn, and black's position is totally lost. That's why in our game, after rook takes d7, finally we have a resignation. This is it, dear chess lovers. The line was analyzed by Bronstein very carefully, up to perfection, and this time Valodia Weissmann falls victim to Bronstein's deep theoretical knowledge. In the end, a chess puzzle for you, where the task is to find the winning move for white. This position is also taken from Bronstein's game, and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you, feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care!